What is good, ladies and gentlemen? It's PMC. We're here to do another podcast, episode 45, I think. I think. Justin, do you know if it's episode 45 or, or what? This is 45? 46? I don't know. I don't know. Oh my goodness. Talk we're to the people. I, I'm going to look it up. We're getting up their number. But yeah, so today we're going to be talking about the new announcement, specifically of you know in, in, in the pokemon presents but specifically the series three but it's called something else something c regulation c and we'll get into why they we'll get into they changed the name i don't know it's series three but stay <laughs> tuned folks uh this is the pmc podcast mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yes it is episode 45 so Guys, thank you for joining us. Um, as always, we will have timestamps in the descriptions if you are watching on YouTube, if you are listening on Spotify. Um, that's tough. You're just going to have to listen to the whole thing and give us a five-star review, right, Justin? Five-star dive. It's two podcasts in a row he drops that. I need to introduce five-star dives to the channel. You know what I mean? Like, to the to like yeah. the public. I need to actually like make the set and show everybody what's going on. But that Pokemon, and we're not going to spoil it, is not technically oh, legal. Oh, okay. It's That's technically right. not legal. In it's a po- no, 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 not anymore. But it was an old school. It's a Pokemon nickname. Mm-hmm. Five star fives. That's yeah. the reference. And then we we're just silly goofball ki- children back in the day. So we said it weird. And five star dies. Yes. Well, his old sprite. He was like. Remember, he looked like he was about yeah, yeah, to like go for a dive, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's in the game. He's not legal. That's all I'm gonna say. That is all yeah. I'm gonna say. So, so uh, oh, oh, you, you hit, yeah, no. your, your soul was a little bit. I like yours better. You, you go, you go. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, we'll start off with some host hobbies, and then we'll get in some news and all that before we dive into the. We're gonna be deep diving the four. Ruins today, the treasure of ruin Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zero came up with a great little pun for the title the uh, treasure of re- the treasure the, of the Re- treasures Re- of regulation C. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> treasures of reg C, <laughs> dude. Hey, it's gonna be so. <laughs> I can't wait until we get regulation D, bro. Like, regulate. Oh, these God. regulate these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, buddy, host hobbies. So yeah, uh, there's kind of been a little bit over here. Actually, we had a busy weekend. Um, went over to PMC uh, PMC Sport Ninjas at Doug's house. Mm-hmm. Kind of celebrated for his birthday. Went over there, just had some pizza. You know, his kids were around and stuff, so it was nice to just hang out. We had sort of a little bit of a family day for a couple hours. Uh, Hung out with the wives. Mm -hmm. Had some fun. Had some uh, alcoholic beverages. They were pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. Had some Papa John's. That was always tasty with Mm -hmm. the garlic butter. Butter. Lots and lots of butter. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, Played a lot of Smash. And I won a couple of group games. It was awesome. I won two games. Nice. Out of three. I played I played this character three times. And I won twice. It was me, Doug, and Mike all together. Yeah, I was MIA. I was gone. Sonic! Sonic. You're winning games with Sonic. He's... Winning games with Sonic, bro. That's crazy, because I can't win games with Sonic, dude. Explosion meta. Oh... Okay, so I was zipping around picking up items, bro. Oh, okay, yeah. Now that's how you do it, bro. That's how you do it. Yeah, it was awesome. Well, and then they'd be fighting each other, and then I would charge up the down B. Bing, ying, 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 I was very happy. Just spamming that B button. They'd be fighting. It was beep, boom, beep, boom, mm-hmm. beep, boom. Yep, yep. Slam them. And then an explosion would go off and they'd die and I'd get the kill because I'd get the last hit. Mm-hmm. Dude, I had one game where I had like seven kills with Sonic and I only died once. I only died one time. I was so, like, I had it because, like, I was doing what you told me to do. I know this isn't a Smash podcast, but we love Smash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what you told me to do. 
I was especially with Sonic, dude. My number one focus was staying alive. Mm-hmm. Everything else was secondary. I only died one time, and I got seven kills. I was like, okay, dude. When you're doing that with Sonic, it changes because he's such a different character. So that mindset, because I'm really, you know, especially from like K. Rule and Donkey Kong, because I'm a little bit of a pleb on Smash, guys. Yeah, Spoiler believe alert. it or not, we're not good I'm at everything. The bottom of the pecking order in that game, but so. Uh, you know, having Sonic being able to, you know, when when I was focused, I'm not dying above all else, and especially in a chaotic meta like that, it was really fun. It's almost like they were too slow. You would have been proud of me. <laughs> Gotta go fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Go punch kill. Oh, dude, he needs to say go like he did before. But rest in peace to that. So yeah, you had that. Did you? Oh, uh, er, yeah. So earlier that day, sa- so Saturday was basically a full day. Mm-hmm. That was the second half of Saturday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're doing like Star Wars. We're starting from the, the end, and then we'll tell. <laughs> yeah, dude. I hope uh, I hope the end is as good as Episode Three. <laughs> <laughs> so the, be- the beginning of um, the beginning of the morning, I uh, I went to the Warhammer store. Uh, well, it's a game store, but. And I played some Warhammer. Uh, I, we have a tournament coming out this weekend on this on Saturday, the 11th. It's a doubles tournament I told you about. So it's me and a partner. We're each taking 1,000 points. That'll make 2,000 points per side, mm-hmm. like a normal game, 2K. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's cool because we can mix and match armies. So that'll be pretty fun. So uh, he's taking the Atlantis Sea Elves. Basically, Atlantis people mm-hmm. uh, riding sea creatures and stuff, but they're flying through the air because magic. Yeah. Like Pokemon, they'll just fly through the air. Yeah. It just works. Uh, and then I'm taking my Sky Dwarf. So he'll take the melee punch side, and I'll take the fly shooty side. Okay. Okay. F- you know what I mean? And we'll just blow people up and have some fun. Yeah. We're, we're going to do a lot of damage. Mm. Uh, so we practice a game, 1,000 points. We did my half versus his half, just so we're familiar with how everything works. We each play that. Like, we each know by now, but just to be really, fam- we wanted to have a practice game. Makes sense. Yeah. And so why not scream each other? Um, so that was fun. I won that. Thanks for asking. Hey, did you win? <laughs> 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 if, that, if that button's red as my old faded Diddy Kong sweatshirt, look how bad this is, bro. You can't even tell it's Diddy Kong. Dude, you can tell how much I love this. Did you see the Smash logo? Can you see it? Yeah, that thing's destroyed, man. Yeah, it used to be the Diddy Kong. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so then we we had some lunch. We had some McDonald's. It's been mm. a long time. At McDonald's. Yeah, we just want something quick, and it was right across the street. Either than that, or it was like the Chinese buffet in the mall, and it was like I didn't want to. De- I didn't want to do that. No, you, you, you're. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're... I know McDonald's ain't the the greatest thing on earth, but I definitely ain't going to no Buffet. No, definitely ain't going to no Buffet. Not no nope, Chinese nope. Buffet. I'm gonna get diarrhea. I'm gonna get it once, not for three days. <laughs> 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 just so, once. <laughs> oh. I played a save with McDonald's. Uh, one of our friends was painting. Uh, shout out to Matt playing Conquest, and he uh, got some chicken nuggets, and then we got some burgers and fries. That's what I got. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pretty pretty great time. Then after lunch, we played a two thousand point game. So a standard two thousand point because zero. I'm I'm a little bit of a crackhead, you know that. I I get spazzed out. You know I love the analytical side of like that Johnny side of me of like deep dive in the the list. Like you'll see today, the re- you love it too. Yeah. We both have that side. Doug as well of like deep diving the nitty gritty details. Mm-hmm. So, and you're friends of mine, so you've been getting the spam of excitement. Mm-hmm. What happened recently in the Warhammer world? Um, they got a patch update. For uh, anyone who's not in the know of how Warhammer works with the new books, yeah, not just a patch. Uh, this is a brand new book. 
This is Day of Sky Ruins. We're we're going from remote or not remote? Was it remote stadium? Yeah, re- remote stadium. Yeah, to Thea. To Thea. That's, that, so, that's what happened. My Sky Pirate Door faction. It's been three years, so we were one of the oldest factions in the entire game that still needed an updated book. We're getting a brand new book. That book is basically your army's book. It's called a battle tome, but basically your army. It's lore. All of the rules, there's some pictures, painting guides, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then it, it basically it tells you everything you know, who your army is, if you want to deep dive that side, but also how to play the army on the table. All of those rules are in that book. Mm-hmm. There's other ways you can do it online too, but like that's the I, – and I like to collect the battle tomes for the – the because I don't play a lot of armies, so it's and it's been three years. So you know what I mean? Like spending the like – 35 or 40 or whatever dollars it is now for the one, you know, hardcover book. Right. Sure. Right. Right. That three years. That's an easy buy in, right? Like, yeah. that's super relative to like, think about like how you play disc golf. You know what I mean? If you had to spend 45, or what did I say? 35, 40 bucks, whatever the book is. Let's say it's 50. Mm-hmm. That's just wild. Let's say it's 50 bucks because I went ham and like bought something crazy or something. Like this, like a special edition book or whatever they cost, right? If you had to spend fifty dollars every three years for like, you know, just you know, just you know, because the book is part of the hobby, it's the rules, yeah, of how to play the game, yeah, or how to play your faction is what I mean in the game. So it's very exciting. New rules updates for the Sky Pirate Dwarfs called Ko Caradron Overlords. Uh, I'm very happy. There's there, there's like half of it kind of changed and half of it didn't. Played a game, and I thought it was like a UU list, bro. Did you win? But, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it two turns. So you know it. Two turns of, of him having a turn and me having a turn. Two rounds uh, at the top of round three. He had two models left on the field. Jeez. So I. They just blew everything off the table. <laughs> so it was very effective. I was very happy because basically I had two ships, one big and one medium. Small, medium, large are the three sizes. Mm-hmm. I did not small, basically. Mm-hmm. had a medium ship and a large ship. They did their teleporting and or movement shenanigans and moved around. Shot the bejesus out of all the, all the elves that they could see. Because they have like a special, they're the sea people from, so they have like a special fog. Yeah. People that put League of Legends, you know, I'm a League of Legends background, the fog of war, basically. Yep. It's like in night and you can't see somebody when they're in a bush. Imagine all of the, 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 so the closest people to you are the only ones you can shoot at or see. Everybody else is fog. Yeah. yeah. They're in the fog, basically. It's like uh, Zabuza. Ooh, yeah, dude. Okay. That's they fight with like a magic fog. So, but I just repositioned around and I just shot whatever I wanted. (laughs) But he didn't think that I could like. He forgot the fact that like I could still do it. I still had different tricks. So it's not the tricks that I used to have, but my new tricks are still good enough, basically. So very happy about that. He he. It's like you like. I, I thought it was a UU list, but it turns out I'm just bad at math. <laughs> oh, oh. And it turns out I accidentally brought you know, like a Kyrim or a Chi Yu. Oh, okay. So what we thought was like a UU match. But hey, it was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was super, you know, good sport about it. We had a good time. So what's, uh, what do you. That, that's pretty much it. I'm very happy about the new book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can't really say more than that. There's a couple of exciting podcasts that are out right now talking about it. So really happy to deep dive all the nitty gritty details. And I've been working on some. So I've got the medium ship here. It's kind of modeled after. Uh, see how the wings are kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like bat wings. <laughs> yeah, but you see how they're like angled down. Yeah, they're, it's so. Sort of a little bit to to be like the silhouette kind of modeled after the the drop ships from Star Wars Clone Wars. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, 
class. The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little bit of that. So I'm building another one of these at the moment. I have all the parts. I've had them for a long time. I just did. Again, I never ran one of these medium ships before. So definitely didn't need to build my second one. I've had it for probably two years in the closet. But now we're building the second one. Here's the base and like a pillar. There we go. That the ship will be, you know, obviously on later. But there other we than go. that, we're also working on. Um, here's the sprue that they come on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Clip them off and blah blah blah. But we're working on, you know, zero. What's my favorite models in all besides the airships? You know, I love those the big. The big sky ships are kind of why you play the dwarves, right? But uh, what's my favorite models? Uh, balloons. Yeah, dude. The balloon. She doesn't have her balloon on right now, but yeah, working on the so balloons with the spears. Ooh. There's either there's either spears or like saws. Okay. Like, like chainsaws. So shanky shank or shreddy shred. Yeah, and the the shanky shanks have always been really cool in the lore, but terrible. I'm trying to trying to watch my language. They've been. <laughs> They've been trash forever. They've always been just the cheap guns. But now they're really great. All right. So now it's time to get to Shanky Shanksville. Yeah. So I I used to, I have six spears and now I'm, I've got, they come in blocks of three. So, you know, in order to have them maxed out, they max out at nines because everything maxes out at. So if like it was your base unit of five, you know, max out of 15. Okay, yeah, yeah. Everything can max out up to three total. Three of, of itself. Uh, so, yeah, here's, like, some some of the pieces and stuff. I just, in the building process, just kind of ripped it open right before we got our, our, ripped them open, started working on them, then kind of cooked some dinner, made some dinner, and then logged on to do some podcast stuff. And here we are. So, for people watching... It looks a little different. For people listening, it might sound even a little different, Zero. And I'm doing a, a little bit more of the heavy lifting today, not just because I'm a jabber jab, but Zero's not feeling 100% again. Oops. So give, a, give, give him some love in the chat. Uh, he does work in the medical field. Him and his wife both do. Yeah. And unfortunately, they were succumbed to some illnesses. <clears throat> yep. So I got. How are you feeling? How, uh, how are you doing? I, I'm feeling way better. I'm feeling way better. You're obviously well enough to record. So yes. that's good. cheers which, to that. Let's which, go. Which is good because yesterday, yep, stay hydrated. Because yesterday I was not good enough to record. I didn't even hit you up until like five at night, and I was like, "Hey, bro," <laughs> you know what I mean? No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I was super sick, so that's why I was not at Doug's. But um. Other than on Saturday. yeah, yeah, on Saturday, so like I started getting sick on Friday, and today is Wednesday. Um, this yeah. podcast will be out on a Friday. Uh, yeah, I didn't do anything from Friday night to this morning. I worked this morning from home, but oh yeah. no, you be chilling. Yeah, but what I have been doing, and I will put a rental code up right now. I've been perfecting a team. Um, that I'll be using on 3v3 ladders for my like main team. This is a team I'm hoping to just... If I, if I got to be in bed, I'm going to be working on some Pokemon. Yep, yep. So I worked on some Pokemon. I got some Master Ball and singles. Um, nice. I beat... Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I beat Arceus, uh, Legends Arceus. I'm way behind, I know. Nice! I just... Other than catching Arceus himself. Y- yeah, yeah. I've done everything like... But you beat, yeah. Congrats, man. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, and then now we have two two things left. Catch all the Hasuian mons. That's no, 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 not just in Arceus. Two more categories of things you need to finish. Okay, Xenoblade Three. Yeah, you know that one. And... Oops, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I give up. My hero. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I sick. I need to start my hero. That was, it was a bad decision by me to start watching Dragon Ball Super. Well, just, we're almost we're almost done with season six. So like, if you start now, you'll be able to 
in, by, you know, with your schedule, at your speed, you'll be able to get caught up before the last, because it's going to 25 and there's like 22 out right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I'll we, do yeah, it. For weeks. But yeah, Depends. um, Sure. This team, um, we are going to do a video on this team. It'll probably be out. We don't usually do weekend uploads, but I'm probably going to do it because I'm really excited to show off this team. It's something I've been working on for like a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to do a battle video with this team. It'll probably be out tomorrow, which will be Saturday, or it'll be out Sunday. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, we'll get we'll we'll deal more with that when we actually get there. Um, but other than that, we did another extracurricular. Um, it was a Spotify exclusive where we covered Nashville. I'm sorry, Knoxville regionals. So that was a really fun conversation. You can only listen to that on Spotify. Um, yeah. So that was really fun. Uh, Justin Tang, the guy who won that, that was his first tournament ever. ever. Yeah. And he that's pretty amazing. Congrats to that. Mm-hmm. And we also, in this past podcast release schedule, we also just recently put out this week the uh, sort of conversation, I guess, video. Mm-hmm. It was a reaction, I guess, to the mm-hmm. Pokemon presents. So there was some stuff that was skippable. There was some stuff that was pretty interesting. And there was stuff that was pretty amazing. Yeah. From all levels, from zero to 100. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Pretty cool to go. So go check that out. Just a fun, fun extra one. So we did one on extra curricular over on the Spotify, and then one over on the YouTube's. Yeah, when uh, when I'm not sick um, for six million weeks at a time, and Justin's not deep into his patch, we'll put a few more videos out. But we'll get back to our schedule of at least two a week for you guys. We've just been a little. Uh, it's been a little crazy here. So, well, go, and, go ahead, go ahead. And it, it's it's a little bit to a situation of like what content to put out at the moment because we're getting we're also preparing, getting ready for um, what you call it, the home patch. Yeah. So, like you said, you know, like Xenoblade, and like I, I've also been working on my fire. I'm trying to get some other stuff done because, like, when home patch comes out, it's gonna be Pokemon kind of twenty four seven. Yeah. Yeah. So we're trying to find a little bit of a balance as well. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is a hobby. So try, it's it's almost like when you have the, uh, like, you know, some crackers or, the, or the, 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 the nuts or the beans or whatever at the coffee plate. You know, it's the palate cleanser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's palate cleanser time. Yeah, just avoid, avoiding burnout. Everybody, we, 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 this is just a, a little bit of a lull getting ready for, what is it called? Regulation? I keep wanting to call it regiment. Regiment C. Regiment. Regulation C, bro. It starts next month, yeah. first of April. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be super hype, and we're getting ready for the home update. So, uh, speak. Speaking of, uh, you know, some Pokemon news. What what do we have today to talk about? Yeah. So we got about seven ish, eight ish minutes until we should probably hit a break here. But we do have oh, some. I, I do want to. I do want to jump in and say one thing, Pokemon related. Yeah. Um. So it is pretty cool. One of our wish list items. I know we're not like super into Unite right now. It's just it kind of you know fell off the wagon. No big deal. Regular Pokemon is way more enticing at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the inclusion of one of our call- long time callouts and long time favorites of Umbreon. She's only in the beta, but that's pretty cool. And then obviously Lapras and Gudra, like we mentioned before. So just want to give those a special shout out because yeah. they are coming. Zacian just hit the live server, and apparently it's doing what Zacian does. So, Dude, I Leafeon. don't understand. Like, this is another reason. Like, yeah, that could have been Leafeon. Yeah, Leafeon's coming out too, dude. Le- Leafeon is our, has been leaked. Yeah, but, like, the Zacian could have been Leafeon. Like, why is Zacian in the game? Like, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just understand. Don't, yeah, it's like... <laughs> It's one of the many reasons why we don't play it anymore. Yeah. Especially that and the bugs. Yep. But, uh, yeah, so that was pretty cool. But, yeah, the, uh, but have we talked, you know, extensively on the podcast yet? We should give a little shout out. Bro, it's not perfect, but it is a giant step in the right direction for all competitive singles mankind. The timer. The timer, yes. So, 
so there's some things with the timer. So, okay. For for we haven't talked about it on the podcast yet. So for podcast listeners, what was the deal with the timer zero? So in front I know of- you're super hyped about that. So I'm trying to lead you because I know you're not feeling super great. So this this will be your section to just give you there's, a nice big. There's ups and downs of the timers. Okay, it means. So what is it? So we can do a 60 minute timer now in single battles. So we can do six v six single battles. You have to do them through friendly competitions. So that means- that creates two things limitations to you know just friends linking up and battling you know for three hours straight it, because you have to create a battle team and lock it in for that whole block remember yep remember when we would um remember when we would do the players cup you'd have to lock so up your team good. for the whole That's, weekend right well it's not good for roulettes no, it's not. It's not good for us. It's actually like the Ooh. literal opposite. So that's where it's bad because you can only make a uh, competition as short as one hour. So like, so me, you, and Doug wanted to play some battles on a Saturday night. We have to have a preset six man team. Yep, and pre-built. That- I mean, not as not a like we could do a roulette, but it'd be one, right? And then the other thing is like those teams are those Pokemon are locked for at least an hour. So you know the other option is you could do three separate teams. You could build three separate teams ahead of time, and we do three separate competitions. Not, yeah, I guess it's not us for that bad because we could have two competitions. It would be three competitions going total. Right. Zero versus Sport Ninja. Justin versus Sport Ninja. Justin versus Zero. Mm-hmm. But the... in that, What is that, five? Well, if you did one... So, like, if we hopped into Doug's competition for an hour... It could be, you know, I could fight you, and then I Doug could fight Doug, and then Doug could fight you. So we could all three battle each other in that hour time frame okay. with our pre-built teams. And so we just go with three. We have Justin. We'd have Justin Zero and Spork. We'd have three different competitions and three different teams. You'd have to just make and three. So yeah. we'd make three teams for a preset, like Saturday Pro Day yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So mm. there is that. That's not too bad because we could pre. Pre-build our roulette teams or whatever. Yeah, and we can then, pre, like we could pick the roulette team on like a, you know, you know what I mean, like on a live stream. Yeah, like on a Wednesday, like on a Wednesday live stream. If you know, knock on wood for weather and or illness. The the, uh, the other big thing. Saturday, we could then battle with them or something. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we could get like two streams in in a in a in a week or something like that. In a week. First stream picks the numbers, the second stream battles with them. Yeah. And we have them on stream or on camera picking the the numbers. Yeah, yeah. It's not a bad idea. The uh the other big thing that this presents is we can host tournaments. So, you know, we could host a tournament, a six v six tournament, the public can join, all of you viewers, you can all join. And the winner could get, you know, a few packs of Pokemon cards or, you know, I've got a couple, I have a couple shiny shinks. You know what I mean? We could well, do something at, like at that. that bear, um, just for, we could have one or two to try it out just for fun. Exactly. No prize. Oh, they're like, just for the fun of having a fun, hey, let's play some Pokemon in some sort of a, I don't want to say structured or format, but basically structure <coughs> and both go oh, just for the fun of it. That's fun too. Yeah. It would, better for an evening. Let's get some pizza and play some pokes for the evening. It sounds like a great time. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it, it's not, but it is a step in the right direction. It's not what we, everything, but it is a step in the right direction. So now we can at least have stream nights, and or tournament nights. And and we can do the... I like the idea of the roulette. 
we can draw them on one and even if it's not a stream we can draw them on camera and or take pictures and post them on social media yeah yep like, so hey, like here's the teams he, guys he would, uh, build a box yeah take pictures of but roulettes we can't do till home update anyways right right oh i'm not super worried about that but i do like that idea let's pin that yeah yeah live, live on the podcast <laughs> So, yeah, uh, that's pretty exciting, though. What other news do we have? Yeah, so the last bit of news before we hit our break, um, we had the DLC announced. Um, Some of the best Pokemon names we've ever seen. Yes. Chef Kids for podcast listeners. We've got two waves of DLC. We've got the Teal Mask coming out in the fall, and then Mm -hmm. the Indigo Disc coming out in in the winter. winter. Mm. Which is crazy. It's a long gap. It's a lot longer than Isle of Armor or... Because the other one was like, you know, summer and fall. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. But yeah. Uh, so there's some new Pokemon. What is it? Monkey Dory. Okie Dogi. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can do it by memory, bro. Okay. Monkey Dory. Okie Dogi. Fazendipity. Okay. Terrapago. Mm-hmm. Is that it? You got one more, bro. The one that holds the, the one that has the mask. Oh, Ogre Bond. Yeah. Nice, dude. You got all of them. I've Let's go! I already forgot the first three. And we just talked about these in that video. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, nice it's work. Just, they're great names. Monkey Dory, Okie Dogie, Pheasantipity. All right, man. Well, I think we will take a little break here, and when we come back, we will talk about the treasures of Regulation C. Yeah, I'll head over to my computer desk, and we'll uh, we'll get to it. All right. See you guys there. Hello, and we're back. Don't mind the fact that we're wearing different clothes. It's not like we had technical issues and have to record this uh, entire part of the podcast. Justin, you ready to talk about these guys? Sorry. Don't don't mind me. I'm just sitting here reading my brand new Carriage on Overlord's Battle Tome that I miraculously acquired, even though... It happened after we started recording the first half of the podcast. Amazing. So in the 10 seconds that we were gone, you somehow managed to obtain that book, right? That's what definitely, you're saying? It definitely was not five days later. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this podcast is... Seconds. We've uh, messed up our podcast cycle a little bit. So our, this podcast was supposed to come out last Friday. It's going to come out this Friday. Um, Obviously, because you're listening to it this Friday. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we recorded this whole second section, it didn't work, and then schedules didn't work out, and we're just getting to it now. Right, buddy? Yeah, we've uh, basically just uh, had a little bit of issues with some computer stuff, and then obviously you were out because you were sick. You missed like four or five days of work, so like, yeah. we had a legit issue going on. It's just been a rough spring, but we're back at it. So yeah. we are here, we are back, we're talking about the main subject today, the main segment of today's podcast, which is kind of what we've uh, always been calling the dark tapus. Yes. yes. But it's the Treasures of Ruin. Yep. So the Treasures of Ruin will be coming out in Regulation C. That goes live the 1st of April uh, and goes to the end of, is it June, buddy? End of June? Yeah, yeah. It's the first three-month yes. series. April, May, June. Yes, so June thirtieth well, will be the last well, day. First will be yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. Um, talk to the people about Regulation C while I battle this. <laughs> so we're not really sure why it's not Series Three, mm-hmm. but it's basically Series Three. If we say Series Three, and you are like, technically, yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, oops. So no, don't care. But basically, there's only four new pokes coming in. So now. Regulation C, Series 3, will be the same as it was Wild West pre-Series 1. It's the same meta. We've already played this technically. We had a little taste of this. They're just introducing Paradox in Series 2, and then now their third section here, and you know, Regulation C. Uh, they're introducing the four Treasures of Ruin. Wo Qian, the snail. Mm-hmm. Qian Pao, the cat. 
Ting Lu the deer and Chi Yu the fish. Mm-hmm. So um, they all have. I'm pretty sure they're all at the same base stat total. Yeah, I think they're five, all five seventy, right? Yeah, five seventy, and they're all part dark. Yeah, uh, and they all have some sort of ruin aura ability, and it does all of their abilities affect their allies as well. Right, so that kind of brings us to um, just like a little overview of Regulation C and kind of what to expect. Justin, they're only adding four Pokemon, but this is a game changing. the The scope of the game is going to change, right? Yeah, it's especially because of the two in VGC primarily yes, here. Yep, yep. <laughs> the two offensive pokes. The fish, especially Chi Yu, is a, is a game changer on her. Like she is flutter main level of of game changing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think I think Chen Pao's good. I think he's better in singles. Yeah. And Chi Yu, I think she, she's good in both, but I think she's going to be the best in doubles. Uh, Ting Lu and Wo Chen, I don't think are as good in doubles as they are in singles. That's oh, yeah. kind of my thousand foot view. Yep. But yeah, let's do dude, you ready to get into this? Where do you want to start? Yeah, let's uh let's kind of um we'll talk about them a little bit in three V three and VGC. We're mostly gonna be talking about this from a VGC standpoint, but we'll like kind of sprinkle in some um three V three as well. Um but yeah, let's uh let's talk about who we think we're let's go from worst to best. Let's start with Ting Lu or who we think will be uh, you know, worst to best. So let's start yeah. with Ting Lu first. Um, who the one that we think might be quote unquote quote unquote the worst, and I and I want to start off by saying the reason why I don't want to bury the lead and get people to leave before we get to defend ourselves. You know what I mean? Right. It's because of the move pool. Yeah. Ting Lu yeah. has great stats. It's got a fun ability, but it doesn't have anything to to use. Mm-hmm. It can't do anything. It's just a big fat guy that just is sort of it just exists. Yeah. Which means you can be played around. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have a niche that it fills other than just being thick. So when there are other pokes that can be thick and do X, Y, Z utility mm-hmm. or offense or defense or, or, or. So King Lu and Wo Chen, I think both suffer from this for VGC. Uh, for singles, I think they're fine because they can both set up rocks. Yeah. Set up stealth rocks. Um, uh, Ting Lu has access to whirlwind. So he's a really good phaser. Um, you yeah, know, I think he's great in singles for that. Yeah, it's a ground type, so it's immune to like volt switching and stuff like that. Like just little things like that yep. make it a great Pokemon for singles. I actually think this is one of the better uh, ruined Pokemon in singles. To be perfectly honest, um, yeah, in singles, I think he's great. So basically, what it does, uh, so the ability is Vessel of Ruin. Mm-hmm. You can see his base stats here, and we'll read it out here for the uh, the podcast listeners. Zero. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 155 HP, 110 attack, 125 defense, 55 special attack, 80 special defense, and 45 speed. So pretty standard. He's a ground type, so it's it's very similar to something like a Don fan. When you look at those stats, it's kind of close in a lot of ways, but that 155 HP is insane. It's, yeah, absolutely but, wild. Rewind two minutes to when I said he wasn't very good in VGC, and you're like, Justin, you love tank pokes. How do you? Because the move pool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, great assault best poke. Uh, other than that, in singles, I think he's also really good at, like you said, the the setting up South Rock and Whirlwind. Great type of stuff. Because what his Vessel Ruin does is that it cuts special attack by one stage. So basically, you see that eight. That he's more the the physical tank, 125 versus 80. Well, the Vessel Ruin covers that 80. This is yep. essentially what it's doing. And then on um, uh, Wo Chen, Tablets of Ruin, he has 135 Spec D and 100 Fizz D. And then he gets a plus, uh, minus one to everyone else's physical attack, including your allies. So essentially for himself, plus one Fizz Def. Yeah. So they cover their weaker side, so to speak, if that makes sense, with their with with the defensive ruin abilities. So for for Ting Lu, buddy, uh, what do you think for VGC? Is there any play at all? What what would you do? Is would would you be playing him? I don't know. I don't want to lead you on. I'll give you my opinion afterwards. So yeah, I'll yeah. just 
for VGC, what do you think? So for VGC, I would definitely slap Stomping Tantrum on this guy. Um, and then I got to talk about Ruination. So Ruination is a move that all of these Pokemon get. Um, and it's kind of like Nature's Madness from the Tapus, where this move cuts the opponent's uh, um, HP in half from whatever it has right now. So Yeah, um, buddy. So it's basically their own Super Fang. Yes, exactly. Perfect. It's, it's which is which is fang. amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's like the one thing you you nailed it. That is the one thing Ting Lu has in VGC. Obviously, his ground type he does get Fissure, but we're not going to rep that on this channel. We don't do that I, here. I think you're going to see that. Uh, I think no, you no, are. No, gonna, no. I, I think I, you I are going to in VGC. I think you're going to see it, man. If, oh, yeah. If the Dozo I, can do it. You will see it, especially on Trick Room teams. Yeah. But we're not going to rep that stuff here. We don't <laughs> no. do that around here. Uh, but Zero, here's here's something I know you love, buddy. Mm -hmm. You shouted out something I love. Let me shout out something you love. Let me slap, slap it back to your court. Memento. Yes. Yeah, I'm a big. Ting Lu does have Memento. Yeah, I'm a big proprietor of this move, especially on Trick Room teams and Trick Room setters. This one's a little different because I think yeah, that would be... Yeah, 45 speed in Trick Room's not bad, right? Yeah, that's actually really good. It's actually really yeah. good in Trick Room. Um, and that's a decent speed taunt in Trick Room also. Yeah. Uh, and then we we can't overlook Snarl. Stab Snarl, I mean, it's... You don't... I mean, I say stab. Five, but it is there, and it can help his special defense even more. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, we glossed over it real quick, buddy. So I'll give you a shout real quick uh, for the podcast listeners. Uh, wh what does Memento do in case people are not, not aware? So Memento, basically what, what you do with Memento is your Pokemon gets knocked out, but the Pokemon in so, front so of it. So if Ting Lu uses it, Ting Lu dies. Yes. Okay, um, go ahead. And then the Pokemon you target will get minus two attack and special attack. So... Um, this is a really good way to pivot into a Pokemon that you need because um, you don't pivot into that Pokemon the same turn. The turn ends, and then you get your, your Pokemon. So you get a free switch with Memento, and you put it out in front of a Pokemon that's been weakened offensively. So it's a great move to use to um, offensively set something up. Yeah. I want to shout out Sandtomb. It's not too shabby. You can trap people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you are pretty tanky, so that's not too shabby. But th I just don't see a lot for me personally. Right, uh, right. But to something that I do think we'll see more play in VGC. This is my this is my opinion, and I'm biased here because mm -hmm. it's grass type. We go to Wo Chen. What do you think, buddy? Yeah. So let's move on to Wo Chen. So first of all, I love the shiny. I love both of them. But I love the shiny. That fall color, that autumn color scheme, Chef's Kiss. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up for the for the viewers. I I don't I got I don't got the shiny. Hold on, but keep going. All months keep, keep going. Yeah. So, Wo Chen, it's a pretty pretty sick poke. He's a big old fluffy furry grassy snail. Gary. Uh -huh, oh, uh -huh. Gary, why did you have <laughs> why did to you go? Have to go. <laughs> So we have we're rocking dark and grass here. Tablets of ruin, like we talked about, will give minus one physical attack, mm -hmm. and this does not proc intimidate. Mm -hmm. It is not something that it was a permanent stat drop. It's just an aura that while Wo Chen or Ting Lu are on the field, it's just this passive aura shred. Yep. And it'll be the same thing for the offensive ones. It does not proc defiant or any of these when a stat drop type thing. It's not doesn't work that way. Right. It's a nice little loophole. Yep. So you're not gonna be procking defiant on Annihilate or uh what's the samurai? We owe in the King Gambit. the samurai. King Gambit, King there we go. Yeah, King yeah. Gambit and, and Braviary. Yep. Uh, so it's a way to get an intimidate without intimidate, basically. But you're also affecting your ally. So Wo Chen will be really good if you pair him with a special attacker. Whereas Ting Lu will be really good in VGC if you pair him with a physical attacker. Mm -hmm. So that way they're not cutting their offense, right? Yep. yep. That's sort of how you want to be thinking about it. Um, Dark Grass is actually pretty even across the board. Zero, I know on paper you were like, wow, it's a terrible defensive typing. And it is. But then when you start to think about it, 
it's only because like we're thinking of something like Shift Tree, right? Mm-hmm. Which is fair enough because Shift Tree is super fragile, right? He's paper thin. Yeah. So that, but with something like Wo Chen, you want to talk about this, buddy? Why don't you read through the stats for me? Yeah, we got 85 HP, 85 attack, 100 defense, and like Justin pointed out with Tablets of Ruin, uh, his defense actually gets a little bit higher with that ability. 95 special attack, 135 special defense, holy smokes, and then 70 HP. Yeah, 70 speed. Speed, sorry. Sorry, yeah, words. the snail does not have the 45. The deer does. Yeah, interesting. The snail has 70? Yeah. <laughs> Question mark? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Wo Chen is actually a little, like three times faster than I, than what you'd think he would be. Yeah. Uh, so he's pretty tanky, though. So, so when you look at something like if you're on like Pokemon DB, mm-hmm. and you look at like, or if you're on Sarah B, and you look at all the different... Um, like weaknesses and neutralities and immunities and yada yada yada, right? Super effective hits. Yeah, you're about you're about even. Like, I I don't want to labor this too much, but yeah, you're weak to fire, ice, fighting, poison, flying, fairy, and then times four to bug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of prompt. Some of those are some of the most prominent offensive types in the game, right? Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But, but, water, electric, grass, ground, ghost, and dark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of good. That's a lot of good resistances. Yeah, yeah. And then not to mention you're immune to zero squad and, uh, com- completely because you're dark type, obviously. So no psychic type. So I feel like it's pretty balanced. Does that make sense where my mind's at? I don't know if that maybe that's just on paper. Yeah, I mean, on paper. Uh, and another thing to think about is, like, we look at that type and we're like, oh, you're four times weak to bug. Well, bug is not very common in BGC. It's extremely common with U-turn in uh, singles, and that's a, in singles. That's a yeah. big problem for this guy, um, being weak to U-turn because it's so common. Like, just wait until Cinderace is finally allowed into... Yeah, uh, singles like this thing is gonna have Tell me about such it. a problem with a Pokemon like well, Cinderace. Okay, and so the reason that I think that he is better, I agree. But the reason I think he is better than Tinglu, uh, especially in a VGC format, mm-hmm. is simply because he's got a better move pool. Yeah. Tinglu doesn't have the move pool. Wo Chen does. Mm-hmm. Wo Chen has uh, a great VGC move like Pollen Puff. He also has, you know, Giga Drain. And he's got 95 and 85 for both defenses, so not a big cutoff between the two. Mm-hmm. Whereas the deer, Tinglu, has 125 or 110 physical attack and 55 special. So it's a huge drop. Yeah. So, like, for instance, the snail gets uh, Bullet Seed and Trailblaze. And knock off. These are a lot of good physical attacks. Do you know what I mean? But he also gets sn- stab, snarl. Yep. Yep. Giga drain. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Base a hundred. It, again, it will only go. It, could, it will only go based off your defense. So the body price isn't the greatest here, but it, it is decent. Um, solar beam could be great. Leaf storm could be great. You could set up grassy terrain because he's nice and tanky. He's a good ruination poke. He's a great leech seeder. Like, there's just a lot more to do here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, his, his his stats are a little bit more evenly distributed. The big one, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Oh, I was just gonna say that I think definitely there's like more play in BGC. I think in singles, this thing's best um, role is just a sub seeder. You know, like sub protect yeah. leech seed and then like Giga Drain or something. Uh, this is a Pokemon in singles. This is a Pokemon for annoying people, and, and annoying people are winning big with this Pokemon. <laughs> well, and not only that, but all that being said, he also gets dual screens. Right, right. So it, it just move pool galore. We can go on for days. Yep. So I do think Wo Chen is a solid tank. Yep. That's You heard it here, Gra- the grass Pokemon of the day, gym leader Justin, grass leader Justin. Thumbs up. And you Decent know, tank. If, if Decent you're, tank. If you're worried about the typing, just Terra it into a fairy, and you're fine. Terra. 
Yeah. Terra Fire. Terra Fairy. Yeah. I think Fairy is the best. Like, I think all four of these Pokemon that we're going to talk about today, Fairy is an excellent, just like. It's a great typing. Just, yeah. Fairy's good for all four. Yeah. Like, if you if you just like, oh, what? Should, oh, I just can't. Well, just go Fairy. Like, honestly, it's just. You know, there are well, better then, options, I think, but, but fairies well, and like then a, fire's good for all four too, because it actually resists the fairy that they're all weak to. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to move on to the next one, buddy? Yeah. Let's start going for the two offensive pokes. So Chen Pao. So the kitty cat, the long saber tooth weasel cat thing. <laughs> weasel cat ferret. <laughs> cat ferret. Yeah. He's dark ice type. Uh, Basically, you want my you want my thirty second rundown? Yes, I can give it to you in five seconds. Okay. Goodbye, Weavile. Goodbye, dude. The, like anything Weavile can do, this guy can do better. Except fake out. Yeah, if you are a Weavile fan, you should get you know for the next thirteen days, you should be doing nothing but using Weavile because it will never be anymore. It'll never be viable with this thing. It'll be the it'll be the less efficient pick for sure. Mm-hmm. Just across the board. Yeah. So why is that? So we have eighty HP, eighty defense, and sixty five spec spec D. Super squishy. Yep. Ninety special attack is meh. It's mm. okay. But we have a hundred and 35 speed zero and 120 attack like done and then not only that we also have dual stab weavile only has the ice shard this boy has ice shard and sucker punch mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then on top of that zero what does sword of ruin do sword of ruin cuts the opposing pokemon's def- well i mean i guess it cuts the field wide defense of every pokemon except itself so Yep, and this will work on other Chen Pao and other Ruin Pokes. You will cut them, and yep. they will cut you. You just don't cut yourself. Yep, yep. But you do cut your allies. But yeah, you cut their Fizz D by one, minus one. So, Armor Shred. Mm. Field-wide Armor Shred for a VGC. That's pretty insane. So, it will affect your ally. Something to think about. So, it's more of a go-fast-hit-hard strat. It's yep. more of a win-big Yep. Risk it for the biscuit kind of strat. It's not necessarily one of the, you're not going to place this next to your Garganackle. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not yeah, going to yeah. go out and cutting that boy uh, when you're trying to do the Stall Lord tactics. So, but it, it's really good. So now you're at 120 attack, dark and ice, great dual stab. Insane. And dual stab. you're at essentially a plus one, or they're at a minus one. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't trigger any abilities. Uh, zero, its type is crap for defense but it's stats are even worse so we don't care i'm not even gonna worth talk about it what do you think yeah yeah absolutely this is a pokemon you gotta slap protect on it if you're gonna be running this in uh vgc i think this is a definitely a sash or a boots pokemon in singles um because you're just not gonna get around that poor defense uh and then you know if you are worried about it you know Terra Fairy, <laughs> right? It's one of those things I don't think it's worth investing in. No, absolutely not. You're just going to go max speed HP and max attack. 80 HP is not bad, mm-hmm. but 80 and 65 are, like, 80 is pretty subpar and 65 is just trash. Yeah. Like, you're just absolutely going to eat something to the face in the special defense. Yeah. So, it's just not worth it. But what do we have here? We have a lot of good moves, Zero. First and foremost, buddy, we got to talk about the fact that this thing also has, on top of all of that we talked about offensively, he also has SD. Yes. We've got Swords Dance. Um, that's a huge one. Uh, and then, Justin, a move that you like to shout out, we got Sacred Sword as well. Yeah, buddy. I love Sacred Swords. The reason I love Sacred Sword is because it does not care about any defensive stat that that Pokemon has. None of the Don Dozo stats, none of the Iron Defense stuff, mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. So, not on top of that, we have Night Slash. Good crit move. We mm-hmm. already talked about Dual Stab, Ice Shard, and Sucker Punch. S Plus. Recover. Do you think you're going to use that, buddy? No. I'm, I'm, not not even gonna, I'm never going to bother with that one. <laughs> like off a of Sash? No. Nah. No, no, no. No? No. Okay. I mean, I, just, it's, I, it's, I figured it was worth at least asking, right? It's neat that they gave the squishy Pokemon recover and not the thick boys. And not the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, come on now. Dude, but if they gave the thick boys recover, dude, th- that would be not. That, that would wouldn't be, be fair. Imagine that, bro. That would be a different world. But here's something I want to shout out, buddy. 
Yeah. There's two moves that I want to shout out for that offensive support cat. Mm-hmm. Because I do think there is a role here. Because he's got 135 speed. Yep. Astronomically fast, right? Yeah. Icy wind. Okay, okay. And haze. Okay, haze is a big one. Haze is a big one. And then there's one more. 135 speed mean look. Mean look. Okay, that one could be interesting. Oh, that can get some trapping in there because that Pokemon becomes unable to flee. And I don't believe that that's... It's not like a fire spin where it's attached to the cat. Mm -hmm. I think it's like on a timer. You know what I mean? Yep. So if I mean look you and you kill my cat or something, you know, I'm just thinking... I'm trying to think outside the box here because obviously the cat can go fast, hit hard. Yeah. We're not going to labor that point. We yep. know what that we'll we'll show that off as soon as it's legal. Yep. Uh, but yeah, is there anything else that you think you, you might be using this for? Uh, I think taunt taunt is another great option, and um, especially Ooh, in BGC, fast like, taunt. if if you can predict something and and taunt away some sort of stra- like you know maybe you're up against a Garganackle or something like that. If you see a Garganackle, uh, it's a or, it's a great a Pokemon tail. or a screen. Oh, perfect. Yeah, something like that. You could literally just taunt them out of the game. Yeah, absolutely. You could shut him completely down. So, yeah, I, I do think there's some play outside of the, the standard go fast, hit hard assassin. Right, right, right. All right, you want to move on to our final Pokemon here? All right, buddy, this is the one. The best shiny of the bunch. Nice fire fish, the Chi Yu. I love the blue fire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, bro, this fish is this fish is it. Yeah, Uh. In my opinion, especially in VGC, this one is going to be the best. I think day one, you're going to see a lot of Chen Pao. Uh, I think we'll, the format will move to Chi Yu uh, further down the line. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up uh, Shiny Chi Yu for all of the viewers. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's tasty. All right, buddy. Here's my call. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. So, you know how we call these guys the Dark Tapus? Yes. I think Chi Yu, now I'm going to say this comparison, not because they fill the same role. They actually are completely different, stats-wise and typing and everything. They fill different roles on the team. But I think in terms of popularity and usage, this will be it, the most popular one. So I, I think the Chi Yu is the Tapu Fini. Hmm, okay, okay. V- from a VGC perspective, obviously. Yeah. I think it's singles. It just fits, it's so... It so fits into every team because it's basically Fluttermane, right? Yeah. What, what do we got for stats here? Let's so, start here. Yeah, so 50, fire type. 55 HP, not good, right? Yeah. Uh, 80 attack, 80 defense, 135 special attack, okay? So there we go. That's that's Fluttermane, plus you've got Beads of Ruin, which shreds um, special defense. So it's actually stronger than Fluttermane yep. on its own. Uh, and then 120 special defense, Justin. And yeah, dude. And then 100 HP, 100 speed. So yeah. it's it's pretty close to Fluttermane in a lot of ways, stat wise. And it's dark and fire, two amazing typing for for offense, and actually not a bad typing for defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I do think Terra Fire is great here for both defense and offense. I think Terra Fairy is great. It's actually one I used to run. Uh huh. When we were trying this stuff out back when it was legal before was Terra Fairy. Mm-hmm. So I definitely want to uh, echo zero sentiments from earlier. The Terra Fairy, especially on this fish, I think is a great one. The Beads of Ruin is just amazing. Being able to shred the defense or uh, special defense with a 135. That's where Kazam sits, bro. That is yeah. very high special attack. Obviously, that's also where Fluttermane sits. But my boy's a command stand. So <laughs> a, a Kazam stand. Yep. See, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, it, it, this thing is going to go fast, hit hard. Got to get that shiny. Uh, it does have a lot of good offensive moves as well as support moves. It's got a hundred base speed, so not bad for an offensive support. Mm-hmm. Hundred twenty spec D again, not bad for an offensive support. We got Will O' Wisp, so you can do some cool stuff there. Zero already mentioned the uh, the ruination, but what do we have in terms of like actual big? Big hitting move, Zero. What are you going to be running in your single set? So, in my single set, um, 
You know, that's pretty interesting because this Pokemon has access to, like, actually some pretty pretty interesting moves that are not just uh, offensive moves. Like, it's got things like uh, Will-O-Wisp. So, like, that's a pretty interesting one. Um, but dual to, screens, taunt. Dual screens. To be perfectly honest, though, I think this Pokemon will mostly... I think it's going to be Choice Scarf. I think that's going to be the most popular set is Choice Scarf and then maybe Terra Fire. Um, I think Terra Grass is one that you and I both really like for this Pokemon. Yeah, Terra Grass is amazing, especially because he doesn't have actual grass moves. No Solar Beam, no Energy Ball, etc. So having a grass Terra Blast will be very handy, as well as being a great defensive typing. So double dip in there. I think this is the kind of Pokemon you will see, like, you'll see Overheat and Flamethrower on this Pokemon. Yeah, definitely. Um, or, and then, or in VGC, I think it's great, you know, Heat Wave. Yeah. Heat wave. Of access to heat wave and snarl dual stab it's going to be everywhere like that's going to be the day one build a hundred percent of chiyus are going to have dark pulse um they're yep. just there's no other option there i mean there is snarl for what do you think about reasons. nasty plot uh nasty plot that um you think there's room or you think you're gonna have to wait for vgc so you're gonna have to redirect some protection no it's definitely doable in singles because of the fact that it could force out a lot of switches um Ah, gotcha. You nice. know, this Pokemon will get doubled down a lot in VGC. So in VGC, I think you always go protect. Um, I, I think with the cat and with this one, you're always going to take protect. Uh, to be, yeah, protect three attacks or... But I guess like if you're going three attacks, you'd be going Terra Blast and probably Terra Grass then. And so if you don't want to do... If you don't want to spend your Terra or go into a build where you have to spend your Terra, I guess the build... You could be Snarl plus Dark Pulse and just have two Dark Moves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do heat, heat Wave, Snarl, Dark Pulse, Protect. Yeah, and, and it'll be Otherwise, pretty interesting. Otherwise, do Protect, Nasty Plot, Dual Stab. But if you do your Dual Stab of only Snarl, Heat Wave, everybody out there... You're going to get wide guarded yeah. for days. So yeah. just something to be aware of, but there's going to be a lot of options. Yep. And and part of that is why I think going with two uh, fire stabs will be a good option uh, in both metas. Going like overheat Ooh, plus yeah. heat wave or flamethrower plus heat wave. And, um, and then Being able blow. to have like an overheat to, to blow somebody up once. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of terror fire. At, that's an overheat at... Of essentially a plus one because of the the ruin ability, yeah. right? The beads of ruin. Yeah. So it, I mean, that's a strong overheat, especially if you you could tear a fire and mm -hmm. get the double dip stab plus tear a fire. Yeah. And you could be you could be modest. You could go real ham with that and blow somebody up with an overheat. So I don't hate that. I don't I, hate that. I, in the early stages of this meta, from what I've seen on Showdown and what we saw before, um, I definitely saw a decent amount of tear a fire. For me, personally, and this is just me, I haven't run a lot of, like, calcs on it. I think it's a little overkill. I don't think you really need the Terra Fire. I would uh, rather okay. Terra defensively. Okay. But, but like I said, that's just me, though. You know what I mean? Like, there is value in taking something off of the board, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, that that, that uh, kind of assured one-hit KO kind of kind of position. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I, I think it just needs some calcs, you know what I mean, to determine if defensive or offensive is better. Uh, I don't think you ever tear a dark. I think if you're going to offense, you always go tear a fire. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, like I don't think you're going to go tear a dark because the prevalence of fairy-type moves right now, especially Flutter Mane, so popular. It, right. just, you don't want to go tear a dark. Going tear a fire means you're actually a really good matchup for, against... Flutter main specifically. Terra Grass is a decent matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Zero, is there anything else about this fish? What do you think? Singles, doubles, everything. Like, What's your overview? You like? Do you agree with my supposition that I think this is the best one? Yeah, I definitely do. I think part of the fact is because a Pokemon has... Like, it's got 55 HP, but it's got 120 special defense. So, like, it actually has a defensive... Uh, viability unlike the cat right yeah for sure so you know uh, you, you slap protect on this bad boy you know protect the first turn throw out an attack protect the next turn, you know just stuff like that I, I definitely think there's play to keep it alive for more than one turn yeah for abs a hundred percent like 120 spec d is no joke like you can shrug stuff yeah and, and that's coming from actually using this thing 
you have before, obviously, too. But we're we're speaking from a place that we've actually used this Pokemon. Like you you will be shrugging moves, especially not very effective moves. Mm-hmm. If you resist the move, you will be shrugging it on the special side a lot better than what you think you will with only fifty five HP. So well, well you know, like uh, look at Fluttermane. Fluttermane's got yeah. a fifty or fifty five HP and one hundred and thirty five special defense and lives and special hits. Be. Lives special hits just fine. For days, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I think this this boy has so much going for it. It's a cool design. I love it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So, Justin, why don't we wrap this up? Why don't you... Uh, you got any closing thoughts on these Dark Tapus and the state of VGC once this starts? Yeah, so the Treasure Ruin pokes are cool. Uh, I do not think they're going to have the overall impact the way the Tapus do. It's just because, they, like, terrain is just that impactful. Mm-hmm. But their abilities are pretty impactful, like especially the offensive ones. The defensive ones, they're gonna matter, but they're because they affect your ally too. It's just like, you know what I mean. And they don't have any like we talked about. They don't have reliable recovery. Yeah, like the the, the snail at least can sub or you know leech seed protect Giga Drain Ingrain. There's lots of stuff, that, uh, grassy terrain. There's lots of stuff that the the snail can do for like supplementary recovery. It's mm-hmm. not the most reliable, but it's something. The deer has nothing, so it's poison, burn stuff like that against Tinglu. You're just gonna cripple it. Yeah. Like if you bur- if you burn a Tinglu, he has ruination. If he does not have ruination, he can't do anything now. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel uh, from a VGC side. So I definitely think he's the loser, which is unfortunate because I think he's your favorite design, right? Yeah, definitely like the big, yeah. the the big bull headed moose. moose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I think I think it's going to be interesting. I think early meta they're going to be very centralizing. I think you cannot. Yeah. I, I don't think you can have a team without one when it comes well, to the beginning. Not to meta. mention, I think it's the new hotness, so people are going to want to play it. Mm-hmm. I don't think that necessarily have to play one of like if you're looking at it from like a, a straight up ones and zeros perspective like there's no gray area it's just all black and white then I would say no it's not they're not centralizing to a meta I think early on especially you'll have to have one just to even the playing field right it's I like think it, yeah but that's you, that's you know? because the emotional side of people wanting to play them not mm-hmm. because it's they're tactically the best choice because I think I think most paradox Pokemon bring more value than these guys. Is my tactical? Does that make sense? Where I'm coming from? Like if you look, like if we look at it a month from now, you'll I or two months in or three, you know, at the end of this thing, I think we'll see less teams packing one or more of these than we will at the beginning is what i mean it's like people realize like yeah it's not actually the most tactical choice to bring one of these in, in all scenarios because again like ting lu's not bringing from a vgc perspective especially where where we can track tournament data uh ting lu's not bringing much chen pao's not bringing much do you know what i mean especially when you still have indeedy he shuts him down completely yeah uh i definitely think we'll see Psy spam die um, in this meta, I don't think because I, because of Chiu. I don't think we'll see Armor Rouge and Didi make a top thirty-two at a at a tournament in at a in this this. That's format. a hot take, bro. Hot take. You heard it here first. I, you heard it here first. No, hey, Indeedee, hey, Armor no, Rouge. No, I respect. That. I respect it because like Torkoal dropped off a huge cliff, so yep. that's respectable. Yeah, we've seen it die before. Four brand new dark types coming in. It's the new shiny hotness on the market. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's the brand new iPhone update. <laughs> Everyone's got to go grab the new <laughs> model kind of thing. So it, it's completely understandable. It's human nature. So, yeah, I, I think we're going to see a lot of them. Uh, I definitely, speaking of Torkoal, I definitely think we're going to see a more resurgence of Torkoal even more so than we have been recently anyways. He's already been making a comeback. I told you so. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it's going to be even more so because Torkoal with Chi Yu is just insane. Hmm. Being able to have, like... A Fluttermane or a Roaring Moon popping off with the Protosynthesis in the sun, being able to have this thing pop off with Stab Fire in the sun. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of good here. Yeah. So, yeah. 
All right, guys, I think we kind of got all our thoughts out there. Let us know in the comments what you guys think about these Pokemon. Do you think they'll be centralizing? We, we got kind of, you know, we got some fun, different, differing opinions here. Let us know if you think they're going to change the game. Uh, if you think they're just going to be a passing phase, uh, let us know. But, Justin, I think that kind of covers everything, right? Yeah, dude. I think it's a great pod. Fun to talk about these guys. Glad we got everything, all the the wires uncrossed, and we got to finish recording it. And yeah. A little late, but that's all right. Most of our listeners understand, like, you know, we got real life stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we're just trying to bring you guys good content at the end of the day. You know what I mean? That's more important than us uploading. To well, us. There was a couple days where you couldn't even talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You literally had no voice, so yeah. like we can't do anything about it. For people that don't know, like the the Rona is still going around, and Brandon does work in a medical office, mm -hmm. so he, it was going around. So probably a patient, maybe. maybe. Not trying to pour yeah. any blame, but maybe a patient came in and had it, didn't know it, but it was going around with some of the other people, and now Zero got it, and now he was off for a couple of days, and now we're but we're back to work. Yeah, yeah. So guys. Thank you for tuning in. If you made it all this way, we appreciate you. We cannot wait to talk to you guys on our next podcast. Until then, I've been Zero. And I'm Justin. Council's adjourned.